parents. They're upstairs. As the days go by, water flowing underground. I would love to put on a strap on and just go to town. They don't exist. It seem like they have pretty good chemistry just by talking to each other. This, is, this has actually been a pretty good date. former Southern Horse Girl, current resident of New York City. I work as a set designer, so I'm really into making things. Um, other things I enjoy are long walks and roller skating. Um, really into trying new things. Instant no is a picky eater. Uh, I definitely need someone that's like open. And yeah, I'm just looking for a man to uh, help me raise my son. Hey, I'm Dallas. I am a professional chef and web developer from Philadelphia. My favorite adult swim stream is William Street Swap Shop. Um, some turn-ons for me are pretty much anything nerdy, uh, intersectional feminism, um, teen cooperative, competitive, anything really. Um, turn-offs are excessive ego, not being able to admit you're wrong, or judging people for things that they do that don't bother anyone else. Um, I like to play video games and board games with my friends. I like to go drink, play Quizzo. I volunteer cooking at a couple organizations in the city. And um, yeah, I don't know. I like chiptune music, you know, synth wave, vapor wave, all that kind of shit. Um, anyway, so nice to meet you. I hope this goes well. Hey, what's up? Hey, not much. I feel like you did a much better job with your intro than I did. You said a lot more about yourself. So, okay. yeah, I mean, I feel like I kind of I know you a little bit. So oh. thank you for that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It took me a lot more takes than I thought it was going to. I had like a previous video that I'd uploaded and it got bugged out for some reason. So I had to redo it. The first one I got, I was done in like five minutes. And then the second one, for whatever reason, it took me like 50 times to get it right before I stopped going <laughs> over myself or whatever. Uh, I was actually, I'm just thankful that we got to like listen to him because, you know, other other times that I've watched this, you know, you hadn't really been able to to listen to the other people's intro video before you had to start talking. So, yeah, so, wasn't well, surprise. Did you uh, hear anything you liked? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you're from New York and you're a set designer. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, I'm not from New York, but I moved up here like a year and a half ago, almost now. So, and where, where in New York are you? Um, uh, currently, I'm in Crown Heights. I live in Brooklyn, but okay. I work in Manhattan. Yeah. Cool. I uh, I worked in Manhattan for about seven months or so on internship um, during my cooking school program, like ten years ago. Um, it was fun, you know, but uh, a lot of work. So I didn't really get to see the city maybe as much as I'd like to. Yeah. Well, wait, so are you from Philly originally or? No, uh, I'm from Dallas originally. I know Dallas from Dallas, right? Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, that's not intuitive. I, you should not have known that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I moved up to the Northeast a couple, like six years ago um, for a job with one of my old professors um, at a country club that he got headhunted for. And now I'm transitioning into like web app development, you know, mobile type stuff. Um, Cause lo lo like web you, were, did you, say you were a professional chef or no, did I make that up? Both. Yeah. So professional chef and a uh, web developer. Okay. Yep. Food web stuff or. No, 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 no. Just uh, two separate things. Uh, I haven't found a way to combine them yet, but. Okay. Solid. Mm -hmm. Well, so what is your like specialty as far as being a chef what do you what are you making a dreaded question um <laughs> so, you know I, I like all kinds of food i'll eat any kind of food um if i had to say a specialty that like really motivates me the most it's 
it's not so much like a region or anything. It's like searching for authentic recipes from, you know, everyone's grandmas. Um, I had a couple people from out of the country stay in my house. Uh, I live in a housing co-op in West Philadelphia. And, you know, we do like community service and whatnot with our free time. But uh, we, we have people from out of the country stay. Had a couple people from China. Had a, had a guy from uh, Thailand stay with us for a bit. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, authentic cuisine is like a term. It's kind of like a dirty word for people who are in the know. It's really just like, you know, your mamas and your grandmas. That's like, that's where the, the cuisine really is. So the more uh, the more of those people that I can get to talk to and like learn about them and, you know, the recipes and stuff, that's like really where it's at. Right, but the guys that stayed with you, it was just like, they were not grandmas? Right. No, but I mean, like, I presume you have at least one recipe that you know from, like, your mom or your grandma or something. That's no, really definitely. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, same thing. How did you find them? Um, well, we've been doing this co-op thing for five years now or so. So, we kind of have, like, we've got our own website set up. People in the community know who we are. And, you know, every half year or so, we solicit people to come join us. And then, you know, we vet them and interview them and everything. So... It's a thing, it's a process that people go through. And apparently there are people that want to come live with us. Um, so it's worked out, thankfully. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, do you have like a signature dish or something like that or it's too specific? Uh, no, it's, it's fine. Uh, my favorite dish to make is honestly uh, Mapo tofu. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm actually quarter Chinese, and that is literally one of my all-time favorite Chinese dishes. That's like, that is my own food. That sure. is like the Chinese dish to like, you know, judge all other dishes by. Yeah, yes, yes. It's like so different every time. Actually, I just had like a big feast for all my friends for Chinese New Year, and that was like obviously always on the menu. Nice. I'm really glad that you got to do that. Um, for whatever reason, I didn't get to actually go participate with the uh, Chinese New Year. We've got a pretty big Chinatown in Philly as well. Um, yeah, I've been to it actually. It's, oh, yeah? I had, like cool. vegetarian soup dumplings, which I'm a vegetarian and that's like super tricky to find actually. Yeah, I'm actually gonna ask you later about where you found those because I only know. Ooh, it was like a year ago. I, I'd have to look, but maybe I can remember. <sighs> yeah, yeah, because I've got like. I don't know, what's the national average for number of people that are like vegan and vegetarian in this country? It's like 6% or something like that. And I don't know. I'm like, in my I, friend, I'm a vegetarian. I don't know if I'm like aligned with all the Yeah. I was just going to say, America, my, like that. <laughs> in my friend network, there's like way higher than that percent. So it's good to know those places to go where I can just be like, okay, you don't have to eat just like random you know, stir fried vegetables, like there's actual food here for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy in New York, I will say. Yeah, it's I don't know. I, I can't believe that you actually do know the national average of vegetarians. Why? I guess as a chef, maybe like it's pertinent. Yeah, I mean, to a degree, but also hang out in my neighborhood in West Philly for any period of time and you'll understand it's rural dense with all the hippies. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, um, you like Philly? You kind of like got sent, recommended to go there? Are you happy about it? Are you staying? Yeah. Honestly, uh, I think it's a pretty great compromise. You know, I'm, I grew up in the middle of nowhere. I grew up on a farm and as I got older, I like progressively. I grew up on a farm actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like more and more like got closer to, you know, big urban type cities. Um, and having lived in Manhattan for a bit and lived in Dallas for a couple of years, um, I actually think Philly is really great. It's a great, um, you know, middle of the road. It's big, but, it, you know, the standard of living is, like, pretty affordable. I can get to New York in, like, two hours on a bus for $10. You know, um, there's, there's a huge tech uh, situation in Philly. It's, like, one of the biggest tech cities. Um, so I think it's just really stellar. There's a lot of shit to do here. Yeah. Cool. You can go see the Liberty Bell whenever you want. It's a huge plus, you know. <laughs> well, you're gonna need to go check it out for uh, the guys at William Street. They they sent one of their dudes up here to do a show in Philly because my friend invited them for like a Valentine's Day party, and they like ran out of time. They didn't get to go to the Liberty Bell or whatever. So you can you can make it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, what type of farm was it? <laughs> 
Uh, it was r- stupid small. It was just like a family piece of property that, you know, I mean, they, everyone there had jobs, but they, you know, they, tried to grow some vegetables and have like a couple like cattle and so forth. So uh, nothing huge. I think the population of the town was like 2,000. Damn. Okay. Yeah. What about you? You said in your video that you're like from, what would you say, Raleigh, Georgia? North Carolina. Hmm? Raleigh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay. I have a friend from there. Yeah, um, it's all right. It's a nice place. I mean, I left, but I enjoyed my time there, so <laughs> not bitter about it. <laughs> no, don't blame you. Um, but yeah, actually, I the whole reason I'm a vegetarian is because when I was younger, I really wanted like a pet cow, and so I like thought that if I stopped eating, describe your addictions. Oh, my addictions. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so my addictions, uh, number one, caffeine, or I don't even know if it's caffeine, it's like carbonation, like Dr. Pepper is like my number one jam. Yeah, that's, I, I really don't lead a life of many, you know, really serious vices. I'm not, I'm not against Many of I, mean, I certainly dabble, but I don't know if I'm, I wouldn't call myself addicted. I think yeah. that, uh, what about, uh, what other, do you have any interesting addictions? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, so. I'm like, uh, porn. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm a fan. Yeah, I probably watch too much TV, but I don't think that counts. Anything that you could be addicted to, I probably do. I'm just not addicted to it. Right. I get it. You know, you're you're a connoisseur, but not it's right. you know, yeah, a connoisseur is a nice word for it. Yeah, that's how oh, I. Um, there was a minute where me and my friend were like really addicted to Japanese omelets, and we would like only yeah. eat them like every day for like a month. The roll ones over the hump now. Omurice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, omurice. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually, I don't even know if I, we ever made it. We were just going out constantly and getting it. So that that was like a a brief addictive phase, but I think I'm, I'm past it. Uh, <laughs> I'm fully rehabilitated. Okay, so I do have an addiction now. So I am addicted to Szechuan food. Um, the, there's a bunch of really solid, legit Szechuan cuisine uh, places in Philly. And I am broke right now because I'm kind of in between jobs. But... Yeah, if I could just eat at one of those places every day for the rest of my life, like I have, I have no other needs in life. That's really, I would be fine with that. Just the the going there to like mutually suffer with all the people that you're with is uh, you profoundly. Nice oh yeah, definitely. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that is what I like. Grew up eating. That's like what my mom made. So I Absolutely. can definitely fuck with that for sure. You could definitely do omurice though. It's like stupid easy, especially if you're not going to use any animal protein. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm rehabilitated now, so maybe I'm past it. But um, I don't know. It was more like the places we were going to get them was like part of the vibe. Yeah, I get it. Have you ever been to Japan? No, I've been to a fair portion of Asia, but not to Japan. Japan is somewhere I'd like to wait till I have like serious like adult money to go to. Yeah. And I think I'm just gonna like go off once I'm there. So yeah. As soon as I get into this whole tech field and start getting like an adult income, like I've already told myself that's the number one thing that I'm gonna do like you know as a treat to myself. I'm gonna go to Japan because I've wanted to go my whole life. Yeah. I just feel like once I get there like there's I want to do some crazy shit. Like, I don't want to be on a, like, I, I'm down to travel on a budget for sure, but like, I don't think Japan's like the place a, for that. A lot of the like super, super crazy shit, I know, like, you actually can't do as a Westerner. Like, there are many establishments uh, that you just don't, you won't be permitted in if you're white. Cause, you know, Japan's like very xenophobic and like, you know, they want to like keep their, their, you know, parts of their culture to themselves and not have other people be a part of that, so. Yeah, well, one of my good friends grew up in Japan, and she's Japanese, so, like, maybe a... 
Do you still talk to your ex? Oh, which one? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Which one was going to be the first thing? Uh, I'll go ahead and go first on this if you don't. If, unless you want. No. I'm, uh, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, so I didn't really date too many people before I moved to Philly. Um, but right before I moved to Philly, I was married for like, I don't know, a year. Surprise. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> Uh, I was like 21. It was stupid. I was religious at the time, not anymore. Um, and you know, we just decided. Wait, how old are you right now? I'm 30. Okay. Yep. Uh, and so then I moved to Philly and started dating a lot. Um, and there's only I can count like all the negative, you know, separations that I've had from people in Philly on like one hand. And it would probably take like multiple people's worth of digits to count the positive interactions on on, on fingers. Cool slut. Love it. Get it. Okay. Um, what about the ex-wife though? Are you on speaking terms? No. Nah, I, I just decided that, you know, our directions in life were so completely different. And I, I don't even consider myself really a person uh, at the point in time when, you know, we were together. Uh, and we both changed so much, and she's got a family and a you know church community and everything down in Houston. So, yeah, whatever, just let it, just let it lie. So but, you, yeah. you weren't a person. Well, you know, you know, like not an adult, you know, not like okay, okay, not a fully formed person, right? Not a reasonably matured person with you know hopes and dreams and beliefs and convictions and so forth. Okay, right. Like when you? a hermit crab. Is like out of its shell and it's all soft and mushy and you know your your family like leads you down the path like okay go to school every day okay time to apply to college okay go to college and, well now you got a now you got an adult job now okay good luck you know there's still like an acclimation period you know where you have to like experience life to to kind of like come into your own and it doesn't necessarily happen for most people in college so okay yeah i feel that um Oh, oh, do I talk to my ex? Uh, it depends. My most recent ex, yes. Lovely person, big fan. Not like dating them anymore, obviously, but it's fine. lots of respect there. Um, ex before that, eh, not so much. <laughs> Definitely a lot rougher. Um, if I saw that ex in a room, like I would leave the room. Okay. I would leave the building. I would get in my car and drive away. It, it's like that. But, you know, I've, I've had other more normal breakups. So that's... Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have people like that, too, here in Philly. But, I mean... <laughs> that bad? Huh? Is it that bad? No, I'm just saying, like, there are people in Philly like that for me. But, you know, the vast preponderance of them uh, all still have strong relationships with, talk on a regular basis, go and do things together. Um, probably, like... The person that was like one of the toughest breakups for me is now like one of my best friends. Um, and you know, she's just terrifyingly competent, amazing person and she does a lot. Um, so I don't get to hang out with her a whole lot because she's just so busy. But when we do, you know, it's totally cool. How long ago did you break up? Uh, we broke up like right after I moved here because we were dating long distance. I moved from Dallas and we were doing long distance stuff and she was super busy at that point you know like really growing herself as a person and i was drowning in my new job it was super complicated um and i was wanting more of the time and she just didn't have it to give um and so we just decided to split at that point and then lo and behold she ends up moving to philly as well um like three six months down the road uh and you know after another six months or so we started hanging out again you know, just reconciled, like, hey, this is why we did what we did. It's not anyone's fault, just is what it is. It's cool when you like take breaks from people though, and then like you get back together, like socially, um, and like you find like you've both kind of like still grown in the same direction, which I think is pretty cool. I like that you're, uh, you're definitely, you know, 2018 modern, empowered, like sex positive person. You definitely throw around the slut phrase oh, yeah. times. big fan uh, big fan of people being able to do whatever the hell they want so uh, man, really, yeah what i do is whatever the hell i want so cool. <laughs> thank you mm -hmm. um yeah okay what else 
do we should we come up with our own questions now? <laughs> do you say something about uh, open relationship in your intro video? No, I I said my instant no is a picky eater because I kind of feel like someone who's a picky eater is just like a picky human, which I don't really fuck with. Um, I said I like people that are open. I've never personally oh. been in an open relationship. You haven't? No, but okay. I, mostly because like the relationships I've been in have been few but serious. Like I don't do it unless sure feel very compelled so like i don't know i've never really gotten to that point like I, it's not like a hard no i guess but mm. i just really enjoy being single so i'm kind of like either i do that or i get like seriously won over but like i, I don't know the gray area doesn't really exist like how do you how broadly do you find do you define relationship what does that mean to you oh i mean either like we're dating and it's monogamous or like I can do whatever I want as long as like when we're together I am like good and kind to you and like treat you like yeah. a person but like unless like I have like chosen to be monogamous with someone I don't feel like I owe them that much commit like you know like I'll be there for them I guess but even like I don't feel like I owe them that much like as a decent human being you know yeah. you to yeah, like as much as a friend like as a, a friend exactly that, you hook up and you like each other but like i don't really like need to like take on their emotional burdens that hard yeah. and i don't love like texting people all day when i'm not dating them just because i don't like love texting all day as a rule and yeah i don't know like it, w once i'm like committed to someone and we're dating then like i'm all in and i'm super serious about it but okay like yeah, if I'm free, I'm free, baby. Like, I don't know how else to put it. No, that's cool. I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, so you mentioned monogamy a few times. So do you consider yourself like explicitly a monogamous person or because, you know, you like, huh, I like being single and I like messing around with friends. And as long as, you know, we're not uh, in a committed type situation and we haven't had that conversation, then it's like totally cool. So where where does that the latter half there that we just talked about stop being monogamy and start being like something else hmm. as opposed to just being like single and messing around like when does that start to be like another kind of lifestyle i feel what you're saying um i don't know it's a little bit hard for me because like i it's not i don't have such hard and fast opinions about it because i just feel that i haven't like gotten to that point where like something has like reach that breaking point where I needed to like redefine it like I think that I definitely enjoy having ongoing non-monogamous yeah I guess you could call it a relationship um but I think there's like a certain level of like how much you owe yeah the other person where like you know I there I would definitely have had moments where like I see someone two three times a month and like we really enjoy each other and have a really nice time and like connect and hang out and hook up and all of that but like i don't know if i would really call that like an open relationship because i think for it to cross that threshold into a relationship like i would be like more there for them yeah there has to be like an expectation that emotionally or in other some other way you have their back in in like a greater way than you would yeah, not that I like would never have their back, but like, more, like just not as much as if I was if I was dating someone. Like I, yeah, I, I feel like I just really go all in. So I'm kind of like, okay. I, yeah, I like I, I feel like you're asking about like being like poly, and it's kind of like I, I don't have a problem with that, and I, I think it's pretty cool, but it's, I think right, like it just depends on how like much of myself I want to give to them. It's not about the jealousy at all. It's more like, how much do I need to be there for you? Cool. No, I definitely 100% get that. That's why, like, I personally break up my relationships by, like, category. So, you know, I have, like, every interaction with someone that I have establishes a relationship, right? So people that I just know, 
are just social. I have like a social relationship with them. People who I have sex with, like that's a sexual relationship. People who I live with, that's a domestic relationship, you know? And so then the, the relationships that I have with people, I just say like, you know, you have these tags, you know, like you're tagging a fucking photo, yeah, Facebook, or something like that, you know? And so one tag doesn't mean that you have to have another, you know, it's just like you have tags A, B, and C, and you have tags D, E, and F, and that's fine. And you can have multiple people that, you know, occupy different spaces for you in your life and different needs that you have or things that you want to do with people or different commitment levels or whatever the fuck, you know, you determine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm about like being polyamorous and all that. It's more just like, I don't want to, like, there's a level of commitment that I would give like a boyfriend that I don't want to do for three people simultaneously because that's <laughs> so much. That's right. like, yeah. Yeah, 100%. You know, that's, that's one of the, the, the challenging parts of, you know, non-monogamy is that we have a finite, so love is not a finite resources, but our time and effort and energy is definitely, there is a fucking finite amount. And that has to be like understood. And I don't personally like the whole like, oh, you're like my, you know, my main partner, or, you know, you're, you're like, you know, less, a less serious partner. People use terms and phrases and, and stuff like that to differentiate you know, yeah, that's right. if you have multiple people and you have to like, you have like your like first wife, second right. wife, like how exactly. do you I think that? Hate that. It's terrible. So, you know, like establishing like, I'm gonna have like a domestic, sexual, financial relationship with this person. Like this person lives with me, we have sex, we have investment, like we bought our, we bought our house or we own a condo or a timeshare or whatever the fuck. Wait, you know. have you like? I, I don't, I'm just using that as an example. Tied, okay. Yeah, and, and then, you know, I have, other partners, you know, in a non-monogamous sense that are more than friends, but, you know, they just don't have as many categories associated with them just because it's understood between us, like, I don't have time to do this on a regular basis, so let's just go to concerts. Have you been in a threesome? Please. Yeah, like a soft yes. Like, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would. Hmm. You, you I'm gonna say soft. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I feel like, I don't know if it, like, I don't think it went like full on, but sure. I think like there definitely have been few encounters that were like, three people all kind of hooking up with each other, but I don't know if we like really sealed the deal, if that makes sense. So is this, is this pre-2000s hooking up or post-2000s? Because when I was growing up, hooking up was like sex, you know, and now I just understand it to be like, people say it's like, oh, hooking up just means you're making out with people. I'm like, okay. A little more than making, I feel like there was sexual acts occurred without like having like full on sexual intercourse. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. like frisky moments between more than one person all risking it up together but I don't think that I I've, I've not had like a full on okay. multi gender threesome like that I'm definitely going to use that use that phrase frisking it up <laughs> yeah you have that one first Thank one's you. I appreciate it I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I mention it uh, I have uh, once I went to a convention um, like a kink convention in New Jersey and uh, just, you know, saving costs, have a lot of people in a room, you know, stuff happens. Saving costs. That's a really good reason for a threesome, I think. I mean, have you, like, when was the last time you got like a hotel room? This shit's expensive. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, I have shared hotel rooms. I don't know if it didn't always turn into a threesome, but you know. Well, the was, the specific environment socially, right, right, this right, right. was a lot different. Probably, probably. I'm not making any judgments about what you do or don't do. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's not that I wouldn't do it. I mean, I like if the right vibe arose. Yeah, definitely. Like the vibe is really key to me because there's a lot about threesomes that can go wrong, especially if it's in a, if it's with people that aren't like super casual, you know, if it's like people who have like more established kind of like relationships with one another, uh, things can get kind of fuzzy. 
Um, and for me particularly, I don't know, like it's an interesting concept and I, you know, it's fun, but I don't know. I almost feel like a four with his like switcheroos. I don't know. It depends. It depends on like. Yeah. Four is four's a good number. I agree. Sexually you are also like, I don't know what your like ideal gender balance would be. Are you asking me personally or in general? No, you. Oh yeah. Uh, so I'm primarily attracted to androgyny and femininity. So um, don't really care what you identify as. Um, you know, I just you know have preferences based on that. Yeah, I don't know. I think that like sometimes, I, yeah, I feel like a lot of times like a couple and you like guest star, which like I guess could be interesting. Maybe if I that's, met like the right couple. That's a whole another can of worms. Yeah. I don't know, like, I could be somewhat theatrical, like, maybe I, maybe I could fill the role, I don't know. Um, as long as you are having a good time and you're okay with the scenario, great. But I've just seen a lot of people do it the wrong ways, and, you know, people end up getting hurt, so. Yeah, the, honestly, last time I tried something that was, like, a long time ago, and, like, I feel like it was maybe for the wrong reasons like it was kind of like me and my friend like doing it to be impressive or something you know what i mean like i, I honestly haven't thought about it in a minute but now that we're like bringing it back up i feel like i would revisit it being a little bit older and like a little more yeah. sure of my sexuality and like maybe it could be interesting more fun experience yeah i don't know i think i'm too lazy to like set it up like if it happened to me like yeah i probably will see but like i never go out of my way to like do that yeah, it's tough for me because, you know, as a dude, um, I don't get approached for those scenarios as, like, the okay. third person very I often. I haven't been approached <laughs> in a minute either, so. Well, that's probably maybe a good thing um, because, you know, I feel like it, it's really easy to get the asking process wrong as, like, me, if I had a partner trying to ask a third person, like, mm, yeah, I, I don't want to, like, see people as a tool just to satisfy my own, you know, predilections or however the hell you say that word, proclivities, I'll say that's easier. Um, you know, disregarding the third person's like emotional, you know, intellectual, sexual needs. Um, I definitely want people that I'm asking to feel like they're valued and I want them to be like 100% along for the ride. Um, but starting that conversation without seeming like you're, I don't know. It's just really easy to offend people in those situations. So I just uh, best assume not go out of my way since it's like not something that I'm like, you know, really dying for. Yeah. Well, I mean, but I don't know. Isn't it kind of like a one off though? Or are you right? Like, so are, they're sort of. Could be. Maybe you. They are kind of just like a character in a role and they're not really like a fully formed human. That is one way to do it. If you want to look at it from a theatrical perspective and you want to see it as, you know, you playing a role and having a good time, um, just, you know, on a, you know, short term basis. Great. And I also know people that have extended, you know, webs of relationships and they do those kinds of things on a somewhat regular basis. So, it, you know, I don't I don't assume that you operate in any particular way and you can do whatever you want. Well, OK, if you are playing a role, what is it? <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty switchy, honestly. Um, I have, you know, as a as a dude, I get pulled more in the dominant direction because that's like what the people that I interact with tend to want. <laughs> Giving the people what they want. It's very nice of you. I mean, that is part of the part of the game, right? You know, it's not just uh, you know, I get my satisfaction and you don't. It's uh, it's like telling a story. You know, it's like collaborative storytelling. Yeah, every person adds like yes and. You know, you keep adding to the to the situation for everyone's collective enjoyment. Pegging? Yes? No? Uh, sweet. I think I'm going to be the first dude on the show. Like, yeah, definitely. We need, to, we need to bridge that gap. You know, I think that one of the most empowering like actions that you can, you can have between, you know, like a traditional, like, male, female type situation is, yeah, do the do the so, yeah, You're yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Um, 
I don't know. I've never like I've never tried it. It's one of those things where like I it's don't, hard. I don't really want to invest in the equipment to be honest. But like if some guy was like, hey, I already like have it all here ready, I would Yeah. Probably just I mean like well, I'll try anything once. Like come on. That's but just, Yeah, it's on my list as soon as I have money again. Uh, like one of my one of my oh, so you're investing at this point. You're no, I mean I already have like a reasonable I don't know what the word to use here, uh, inventory. Um, but <laughs> that's one thing that I don't actively have right now. Definitely, definitely for it though. I just haven't gone around to it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. What do you mean it's hard? Physically, like it is hard Maybe. being being the top. It well, is hard. It will be hard for you in your muscles. So be prepared. If you don't exercise, do it. <laughs> I'll I'll start my like pegging workout regimen <laughs> a lot of resting excellent yes wait so that's like that's what what are your like tips like what what's what's it like like if i were to try it what do I expect? Lube, lube 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 cannot use enough if it hurts either person not you're either not going slow enough or you don't have enough lube. like that's 100 percent the, the answer yeah i know it's kind of like you were you were so able to hurt another person. I've never really been put in that situation before. I like wonder about it. It's like almost yeah. If you're not paying attention, it's really easy to hurt people. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'd probably be paying attention <laughs> like that. Be kind of a notable moment, I think, in my life. Cool. Um, what else is in the inventory? <laughs> Uh, let's see. I've got a bunch of rope. You know, I was raised Boy Scout, so I'm, I'm, that, that that stuck with me. A bunch I've of. A, I've got a Batman. I've got like a a metal paddle, and it's got like the Batman with the bat symbol carved out of it. So you know, you hit someone and leaves a mark. Like, yeah, with Batman shaped mark on him. Why uh, Batman? I've got a I've got a Hitachi um, for all my friends. What is that? That's like the the default number one like mother of all vibrators. It's like super simple looking. It's like got a it's got like a big gra uh, grip and then you know like a this sized kind of like softball you know, softball uh, tennis ball sized head. And oh okay yeah like it's a personal massager. It's real strong. Okay. It has two settings. Like the first setting is the only one you should ever use. The second setting will like injure you if you try and use it. So what what I heard? Unless you just legit have like some shit yeah. in your shoulder you need to work out. Yeah, yeah. No, I heard that you're supposed to use the second setting over jeans if you're like super super sensitive, because I know some people just like can't handle clitoral stimulation. So then in that instance, like that's the option. Like you put jeans on to diffuse the vibrations and then you go for the second setting and, you know, have a good time. But yeah, that's the, that's definitely the killer toy. That's the, that'll, that'll, that'll do what you want it to do. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I um, should have known that. Uh, no, it's, it's not assumed in this country, like women, socially aren't expected to like know how to please themselves so like why why would society tell you about that um yeah well they didn't so um i have a couple of cock rings those are nice uh and i have like a solo uh it's called aneros it's like a solo um prostate kind of toy Fun. Damn. Okay, so you're stocked. Like you've got like a full array. I have a reasonable array. I know people that have way bigger supplies. What about you? It's so meager. I feel so like I'm about to be so spicy right now. No judgment. No, yeah, I have like two vibrators that are like just for me, and like that's it. Like I don't know, engraved nothing. Like no. When was the last time you went to a sex store? Oh, like just a few months ago, like three, two months ago, maybe. What kind of sex store was it? Um, this is a little bit embarrassing. Uh, it, well, I went to the Pleasure Chest, which is like in East Village. Yeah, uh, about 
partially because it's like a solid store and maybe like a tiny bit because it was on Sex in the City. Um, but it, it definitely has a reputation. Yeah, it does. And it was really nice. I mean, I don't like not go to sex stores. I just feel like I don't invest in that that often. Cool. Like, I don't know. Maybe I should. I don't like, I, I'm sure there's like more things I could be getting I, and experimenting with. I think if the ones you have are like doing the job, then that's for me. But now I'm like, I, I feel like I need something that's like, yeah, you need to find a friend that's got one of those magic wands and has to borrow it, you know, just like slip a condom over the head. So like, you know, cleanliness and whatnot, it's not a concern. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. Um, do I borrow vibrators from my friends? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like it's 2018, fuck it, do whatever the fuck you want. Um, eh. What's the worst could happen? I mean, you're, they're your friends, right? So if you ask and it's weird, like, no one's going to know. They're just going to be like, I don't know. I mean, we make recommendations. I made, like, a little unboxing video for my most recent one. But we just don't do, like, swapsies that often. How much debt are you carrying? Uh, like 10 to 13 left to pay off from culinary school. So, uh, not too much. That's not bad. My monthly payments are real low, so. <laughs> and once I get this tech job, okay. all my all my worries are going to go away because I was comfortable cooking, making around 30 a year. Uh, and, you know, the, the lowest level income in the tech field is like 50 I, I was happy with 30, so I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do with 50, at bare minimum, a year, you know, and within like a year or two, I can definitely see that moving into the 70 range. So uh, I'm not too worried as far as like death's concerned. Um, yeah, I, well, I'm good on that. Like I went to an in-state college, got a nice healthy scholarship and my, I had a college fund, thank God. So. I covered the last of it. And then, uh, yeah, I make pretty good money at my job right now. I really like it. I could make a healthy sum if I want to work every day, but I'm freelance, so I can kind of pick and choose. So it sort of depends on like what creative side hustles I've got going on and Sweet. how much time I want to take for like my own art shit that I'm always up to. So yeah, good. I'm financially, all right. I'm feeling that. I have a small contract job right now um, that, you know, I don't have anything else going on other than just looking for like a more stable job. So that's what I'm kind of doing with my time. So that's my first real freelance job. I had like a couple small businesses that I started, like real small, like I uh, don't file things with the government small. Um, for a bit, but this is my first like, hey, it's a freelance job, you know, work on it whenever you want, you get paid when you, you know, deliver whatever break points that are requested from, you know, the contractor. Uh, but I definitely am looking for like a more long-term job because like I'm learning a lot just from the internet, you know, on my own, but I want to be on like a team that has like a bunch of really talented people and the resources to invest and, you know, get me up to speed. So that's my, that's my goal. Hello. 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 We're about hey. to five year plan. Can you hear me? Oh, Hello? yeah. Can you hear me? Well, okay, so yeah. I, um, I just wanted to ask you for any recommendations on toys. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we already do that? I think they said that they don't have any recommendations on toys. Oh, they don't have any recommendations on either one? <laughs> what about I think we sharing? Should, I think we should move away from the toy subject entirely. I think maybe we should talk more about, like, what they want to achieve in life and what yeah, they would, would expect like from each other well, in a long-term he was, relationship. He was very adamant on it, so I just kind of wanted to, like, hammer it in a couple more times, just in case. Well, can we get off the toy topic and talk about the... Like, oh, let's have yeah, a chat. Let's have Shit. Shit. This, this is too many wheels. There's more wheels than I expected. No, there's just eight, I don't know where to come in. 
This is this is a semi truck full of wheels. Look who. What's going on? I've I've got a question for Dallas. Where where are the bodies? Can we bury the bodies, Dallas? Here. Oh, God. 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 Oh, God.
and then just working in my community, building um, organizations and so forth. Those things are very interesting to me. And then, like I said, professionally, if I can transition into like a project management type role, um, you know, where I'm helping people reach their potentials and, you know, organizing and, and you know, scheduling and keeping everyone on on uh, budget and so forth. That's uh, that's very appealing to me. Cool. <laughs> yeah, just uh, I got to get there. It's going to take me a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anything that's worth having is worth working for, right? Mm -hmm. So I am I'm doing OK for now. Enjoying the journey. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I feel very strongly about the journey. Like, that's why I wasn't that into the five-year plan thing, because a year ago, I didn't even know that, like, my job existed and that I could have it and that I would love it. And I, I, I just much prefer to be open to, like, to work hard with what you're doing, yeah. to constantly, like, engage in things that you feel passionate about, but to always be open to possibility. Mm -hmm. What kind of sense? What do you dislike most about your date? Oh, good. <laughs> oh, you go first. Uh, it seemed pretty cool to me. Uh, no, hit me with it. Room for improvement. Let's go. <laughs> something in your video about skiing? I, I don't know. I've never been skiing. Oh, I didn't say anything. I, I've been skiing once. It was fun. Oh, uh, then I, I misheard. Sorry about that. Uh, well, then there goes the one neutral thing that I had to say. Yeah, I, I so far haven't come across anything that I really dislike. So I, uh, I'm not. I'm not just saying that to be nice. I legitimately don't have anything to say. Well, thank you. Uh, I mean, you know, divorce, thirty, red flag, kind of. You know, but is it? It's not not it like it's worse than that never happened. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Like if I had to compare two people, like this guy's been married and divorced already by thirty, and the, this other guy hasn't. Like, but <laughs> like it's not like the worst thing I've ever heard either. Okay. But you know what I mean? I mean, come on. But like, that's do people say that to you? Is that like? No, I never had anyone say anything like that. I also don't really, I, a lot of the people that I associate with see the, either either they see the flaws in like the cultural thing of marriage or they understand that it's not for everybody. Um, I, don't, I don't think I need that to have, you know, like really hard and fast like commitments for people. Um, so I'm no, not- No, I mean, I understand that. I just think that like, when you meet somebody and you don't know them at all and they tell you about like a very serious relationship that they had that like didn't end well and you don't know the context. Hmm. Okay. You want to know the context. You sure. need, you know, like you're like, Hmm, like maybe I need a little more info here, but you know, not like I'm still here, aren't I? <laughs> do I can, continue to talk about this or do we just accept that that is the answer to the question um I, I just don't want to seem defensive for defensiveness's sake i am perfectly willing to accept the conversation so far as is regarding what is there something else you need to say no I, I mean you know so uh you know my my what well, just w let me preface this really quickly with saying i'm 23 and i think i vaguely know like two people my age that are married at all much less having already been married and then have been divorced so it's different for sure, sure. uh yeah i just we got divorced because she wanted to be more religious and i decided finally that i wasn't how did you decide that uh she wanted to go all in you know, volunteering all of her time with the church's community and organization, you know, so forth and so on. And I just didn't. I was I was being browbeat by my industry, you know. I had hardly any time um, to relax professionally. Um, it had it, less to do with, like, actual faith and more to do with, like... I don't know. It definitely was about faith, but there's a lot of contributing factors. Um, and, and it, you know, I was just like, I don't know if I believe enough to commit 
that much of myself to an organization. Um, and so she was like, well, I don't want to necessarily, you know, potentially raise a kid in that kind of environment. Um, but like, what, what, what were the types of volunteering that she was up to? It was 10 years ago. Um, Cause I feel like I'm not religious, was not raised religious, but the thing that I can vibe with is Numbers, nudes, or neither. <laughs> so, a lot of people get confused about this question. You're on the level here? Yeah, I'm confused. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't generally go down the nudes route uh, because, A, people never ask me for them. Uh, and then, <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, I think that, you know, women giving nudes in this climate socially is like kind of like a hairy situation because there's a whole like revenge situation, you know, concern people like giving them out to other people as like retribution for a poor in relationship or whatever. Um, and I definitely want to be aware of that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't, understand that. but I, you know, I will say that I used to think like, Oh, you have to be really careful if you send a nude and like, what if it leaks? But you know, I'm a designer, and um, one of my friends recently has been working on this, like, very sexually influenced project where she is nude, exposed online, whatever. Yeah. And the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of like, I I am willing to send a nude, but if I do, I'm going to do, like, a damn good job. And <laughs> if it is out there, then, like, fuck it. Like, it's a representation kind of of my work and my aesthetic, and, like, that's fine if people see that yeah yeah i definitely like, know a lot of sending and... like beautiful art nudes but yeah no I, i'm full, like yes if people see it then like it just has to be as good as my other work cool yeah i i probably won't ask but if i ever receive a... please digi kiss oh how, how do you do you <laughs> Oh, oh, you have to kiss the green? Yeah, just... yeah, yes, no. Woo! Uh, okay. The cord on my camera doesn't reach that far, so that's all you get. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh. Sorry. Uh, I feel like a digi kiss should never be followed by sorry. Maybe you should do that again. I'm sorry about the lack of timing. Oh, we, we have to do it together. Yeah, no. No shame otherwise. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> there it is. Cool. It was a uh, very nice talking to you. You're awesome. <laughs>